Hey, what's good, family? It's your man, Darrell II. I hope you're doing well. I'm finishing up my lunch break, and I have a word the Lord gave me a couple of days ago. Uh, before we do move forward, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that I give this word the way you desire for me to do so, and I pray that you would be um, revealed in the message and that you would speak to the hearts and minds of those who hear it. And I pray you get the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you playing it safe? You know, as a child of God, there are going to be times in our walk as Christians where God will give you opportunities to exercise your faith. And it's up to you to implement your faith in a way where your faith is alive. I guess what I'm saying is it's simple. It's just like in a football game. If you're a receiver and you receive the ball, once you catch the ball, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to run into a void capture or are you just going to stand still and do nothing? Or let's say someone throws the ball towards you and you don't extend your hands to even catch the ball. You let the ball hit your chest and go to the ground. You missed the opportunity. You didn't try. And so sometimes as a believer, there are opportunities where God brings things our way and it's up to us to receive what he provides. He provides, but in order to be a recipient, you must receive. I think about Peter, how when he was on the boat, I think I mentioned this earlier this week, you know, he received the word from Jesus. He asked for permission from Jesus to walk on the water. And when Jesus gave him that permission, he took the word that Jesus gave because Jesus gave him the authority and he walked on the water. He did the impossible. But if he had just asked Jesus for the word, and Jesus gave him the word, gave him permission to walk on the water, and then he stayed in the boat. Well, that would have been a wasted opportunity because God was like, I did my part. Why aren't you doing yours? And sometimes in life, we can be that way. We can miss out on opportunities of, of opportunity that God brings, maybe because of fear, maybe because of not fully understanding or comprehending, or maybe even worrying. And so it's important to discern whenever God brings you those opportunities because you can miss out. So I want to give you some examples. Um, I originally called this, are you playing it safe? But when following God, it requires risk and you can't always play it safe and be satisfied. I'm reading my notes. Peter received the word from Jesus, but then it was time for him to walk in the water. He took a risk. There's a story in the book of Kings, a man named Barak. He was supposed to have victory and he had spoken to the judge of Israel, Deborah. And he said, I will go fight, but only if you come with me. And she said, OK, I'll come with you, but the victory will not be in your hands today. The victory of the killing or the victory of killing this king will be in the hands of a woman. And so he had that opportunity to do so and trust God and go out there and fight. But out of fear, he said, I will only do this if you're a part of it. And of course, maybe he was scared of the moment, but no risk, no reward. So who, ha who got the victory? A woman. She lulled the king to sleep and then she took a, a nail and shoved it. She hammered it into the king's temple as he was asleep, killed him. Moving forward, she took a risk. Uh, Matthew 16, 24 says, take up your cross and follow me. He says, if anyone would come after me, let him take up, take it, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And so in some situations in your life, when it comes to knowing the Lord, you have to deny yourself. As a believer, you deny yourself and you follow him because he has a purpose for your life. I'm going a little fast because I got to clock in. So count the cost, Matthew, Luke 14. You know, it's important to realize the, the walk that you're on. Jesus makes it clear. He says, count the cost before becoming my disciple. He says, before an architect builds a building, they first count the money they have. Then they go and build a building so that they don't start out building the building and run out of money and don't finish the project. All right, one more thing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver him out of every one. Not a bone is broken. In other words, if the Lord is telling you to take a risk, you can rest assured he will not let you fall on your face. Now, I think it's important to consult the Lord. It's important to ask for his guidance. It's important to make sure that you're being led by his spirit in your decisions, 100%. But sometimes God's going to say, I'm going to do this much. I'm waiting on you. And so it's important for you to recognize those moments and make a decision. Are you going to walk by faith and not by sight? Or are you going to stay still and not move forward and play it safe? So again, I know playing it safe is important but not when it comes to paralyzing your faith. So I hope this word encouraged you. I hope it blessed you. If there's anybody watching and you don't have a personal relationship with God the Father, uh, the only way to have one with the Father is through his son, Jesus Christ. This comes through a confession of faith, a belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross, and that he was risen from the dead. And if you ask him to be your Lord and Savior, he will. The Spirit of God will come into your heart, and you will be sealed for the day of redemption. You will be a child of God, and you will be saved by grace through faith, not of yourself, because you'd be able to boast. So your faith in Jesus is what allows you to have salvation and go to heaven. Because without Jesus, your works would not get you into heaven, because our righteousness is like filthy rags. And unfortunately, we'd head to, head to hell if we didn't have Jesus. So if you want to know Jesus, then repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross, and that God the Father raised you back from the dead. Please come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. If you did that, your name's in the book of life. 
I recommend you get a Bible-based church so you can grow and watch God transform your life. My name is Daryl Alder II. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, and Twitter. And I have a book out on Amazon called Random Thoughts of a Believer. Check it out when you get a chance. I also have another book called God and His Men, A Spiritual Enrichment Plan. And then my mother, Marvell Alder, she has a book called New Believers, A New Life in Christ Jesus. A great, great book to help anyone who's a new believer. Gotta go. Take care. Peace.